The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. Benjamin J. Heckendorn was a mild-mannered graphic artist until he was bitten by the electronics bug. Now, every week he takes on new projects, shares tips and tricks, and answers your viewer questions on The Ben Heck Show. Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. In the next few episodes, we'll be taking on a viewer challenge to build a dog treat dispenser that can be remotely controlled over the web. Today, in part one, we'll make the mechanical treat dispenser itself. Let's get started. But first, the news. Today in bed news, after years of waiting, I finally got to play through Bioshock Infinite. And after years of waiting, I played through it in two days because I didn't want anyone to spoil the ending for me. I won't spoil it for you, but it's very far out. I mean, like, really far out. Uh, it's definitely worth a playthrough. I think I like the original Bioshock better because the weapon modifications were more interesting and they had different ammo types, which kind of created new situations. But yeah, you should definitely check it out if you're interested. Bioshock Infinite. Automatic dog treat dispenser. Here's the basic plan. There's a device in your home that can dispense dog treats and also has a webcam on it. The idea is you can log into this device from work or remotely or something, but it should be on your lunch break. And then see if your pooch is standing in front of the device. If they are, you can click a button and it'll tell the device to dispense one treat, which your dog then, I assume, would eat. So, you know, this thing won't just give out treats randomly or all day, you have to enable it. So what we're gonna do today is build the thing that actually mechanically dispenses the treats. Here's how I plan to build the milk bone dispenser. There'll be a hopper here, which you stack the milk bones in sideways. Those drop into an indexer, which rotates around via a motor, and then it drops them into the dish here. So the top view, they load here, rotates 180 degrees, and they dispense out this way. And we'll probably have to have an IR opto here so it can tell when it's done a complete revolution or half of one. So I measured the milk bones on the computer and then I have a margin of error because obviously they're not all the same. And then I'm gonna start by making this rotary indexer here. And it has a, a servo mount on the bottom and then these tabs which will go into these um, opto interrupters so it can tell when it's made a complete uh, revolution. And there's gonna be two pieces. The milk bones are roughly half an inch in height and this is six millimeter pieces of plywood. So if I sandwich two six millimeter pieces together along with these tabs, it will be roughly the height of a milk bone. So below this, there'll be another piece which I have yet to laser. So it'll be like this. So on one side, it'll be blocked off and this side will lead to the dish. So we'll have our multiple milk bones here kind of stacked up. And then what'll happen is it'll rotate, taking one milk bone away, dropping it, and then the next one will hopefully lock into place. So it'll be kind of like a Pez dispenser. Yeah, we're basically building an upside down automatic Pez dispenser for dog bones. So I cut all these stackable pieces and it's kind of like a bone shaped chimney and these will form our hopper, which is the thing that will actually hold the bones stacked up. So they will hopefully index out flat into the rotating mechanism so they can be given to the dog. Or would a cat eat these? I don't know. Got more parts cut for the dispenser. Three points. There's gonna be a little scoop here that channels the bone into the bowl and the bowl is actually in this ring here, so it's always positioned relative to this because if the animal knocks the bowl away, then the treat wouldn't go in the bowl. I guess the animal could still eat the treat, but you know, that would be kind of funky. So we have a servo here. It's mounted into this first plate. Then I have these tabs which space out these plates. Here's the second plate. And this actually goes through both of those. And then this is actually what rotates. See how it connects to the servo? This is a continuous rotation servo, which means we need to know its position. So that's why we're going to use this opto interrupter 
put it right here and these tabs rotate around and that's how whatever operating system we use will know how this is positioned. So I'm going to start assembling this. Finding the tiny surface mount part you just dropped? Ooh, not easy. Quickly finding the latest technology, thousands of in-stock parts, services, and solutions on the Element 14 store? Now that's easier. Discover all of the ways we're building an easier experience at element14.com forward slash evolution. We're testing the cycles of the milk bone dispenser. We don't have the opto in place, so it's not quite lined up, but it'll at least show, if it, show us if it's going to cycle through correctly. So if you don't have it stop in the right position though, the milk bones could get stuck, so that's something we want to watch out for. Now that it's mechanically sound, I'm going to attach this IR interrupter so it can tell when it's done a complete revolution. When the unit's in place to either load or drop a bone, the tab will be inside of the opto sensor, and that's how the system knows when to stop. Here's our second test. We're again using the Arduino just to make sure it works. But now we're actually looking at the opto sensor, and I found the data sheet online. It apparently was kind of an old opto sensor, but whatever. So basically you can see where the tabs are, and then it stops it at that point which gives us a near perfect indexing of the bones. I'm gonna load some bones in and show you the new example. Reset the processor, load the bones. Just holding the processor, reset state. Should do a pretty good job. All right, go ahead. Watch it, it kind of starts out slow, see that? Just in case. Starts slow until the tab is clear, then it speeds up, then it stops. So yeah, it looks like it cycles pretty good. Could probably make a slightly taller hopper, although we want, don't want to make it too tall in case it's a jam. So what we did in this episode was we made it mechanically work. We got it to load up a bunch of milk bones and then index them out into a dog bowl. The next step is to get this on the web. Now we're using Arduino to demonstrate this, however, that's not really good for the web. So we're gonna look into maybe a Raspberry Pi or a Parallax propeller with an ethernet shield so you can send the webcam data to you remotely so you can see your pet enjoying the treats. So that's what we're gonna do next time. Today's viewer question comes from Liz who asks, I was wondering how much it costs to turn an Xbox 360 into a laptop. Well, you've got the cost of the Xbox, plus a screen, casing materials, audio amplifier, and cables. So it's usually at least $500, including the cost of the console itself. When I build them, most of the additional cost actually comes from labor. That's all the time we have for today. In our next episode, we'll continue working on the dog treat dispenser. We'll see you then. Stay tuned at element14.com forward slash TBHS where you can join the discussion, suggest builds for the show, and even have a chance to win upcoming builds. Remember, you can always email build ideas to benheck at element14.com. Thanks for watching.